Hello, and thank you for joining us for the third in our virtual design series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the design process. And the great news is that regardless of whether you're purchasing a new home and going through that design process, which of course we hope that you will be doing and purchasing a home from us, but if you're not, and you're just wanting to freshen up the home that you live in now, this process is the same. I'm here tonight with Teresa Moxon, and for those of you who joined us for our first design series where we decorated for the holidays, uh, Teresa was with us for, for that event as well. Teresa and I have worked together for 30, over 30 years, and Teresa has merchandised many of our Cobal Urban Homes models. We're coming to you from our Orion model at Boulevard One in Lowry, and Teresa decorated this model for us, and you're going to get a chance to see um, this model, both a before and after, um, after Teresa has freshened this particular home for us. But I um, want to just start talking through kind of what the, the process is. Um, and first of all, it's finding your inspiration. And Teresa is going to talk a lot about um, how to find that inspiration when you're going into that design process. And then planning, kind of how you can plan for that process. Uh, and then some fabulous resources. And I think you're just going to absolutely love some of these uh, wonderful resources that Teresa has found for all of us to access to help with this process. So Teresa, I'm going to let you kind of take it away and, and share with us um, where to start, how to start. Awesome. Thanks. It's great to be back. Um, and while this past year has, um, we've all spent a lot more time at home, I finally found the time in my um, own home to look around at some of the projects that I wanted to work on that we have not had time to do and focus on. And even being a designer, I too needed to find some fresh ideas and inspiration. Yep. So I'm here today to share with you how I came up with some of my ideas. Um, I also think that I can safely say that through quarantine, I'm not the only one that did a little bit of binge watching on HGTV. <laughs> I found some really good ideas. I found some not so great ideas, but mostly I found some really good motivation as far as doing some of these projects on my own and taking on that responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, I also started following some other designers on Instagram and collecting some of their images. And um, In addition to HGTV, um, which of course I was right there with you binging, <laughs> binging watching and did find some, some great inspiration there. Where else have you been able to find some of that, that inspiration? Um, well, of course I spent countless hours on Pinterest mm -hmm. um, with so dozens easy of to new do. pins arriving in <laughs> yeah. my email every day. Um, it's such a great website that there's so many um, design, I mean, you can plug in any keywords and you'll be able to create so many awesome design boards and they're easy to share. So in terms of keywords, some examples for people who haven't used Pinterest. Well, yeah, so if you think your style maybe lean towards modern and you wanna do plug in modern farmhouse, you'll just get hundreds of different ideas and then you can spin off from all those ideas for all different sorts of details. You can even um, start with color palettes if that's where you decide that you're going to pick your design style from, whether you're working with blues or you want to keep sort of a neutral palette, you can um, start, there. start there with those color palettes. Plug a palette in and then they'll kind of provide all Yeah, of and you'll ideas. just be you know inundated with all right. sorts of ideas and then you can, like I said, it'll spin you off to different um, resources and um, different rooms and all types of things so great it's really awesome um, I also suggest try using the save feature on Instagram to create some digital mood boards because I love and I'm a big huge fan of using digital mood um, using mood boards for all of my projects I find they help me stay focused keep um, everything cohesive and everything um, it, they're also super helpful as far as when I'm doing my shopping for um, to for reference and mood boards are also an invaluable um, process to use for anybody that's building a new home or working on a remodel project so that you can save these and you'll have these um, to share with any of the designers helping you along the way. Um, and speaking of mood boards, I found another site that I really liked, which was called stylesourcebook.com. And what's really nice about this site is they have hundreds of already created mood boards. So if somebody's not familiar with what we're talking about in terms of mood boards, um, this will give you an idea of what they are, they look like, how to create one, and then maybe just grab one of those, then that's where you start with your inspiration. 
Great. And after Teresa shared that style source book with me, I did go on and play with it and it is tremendous. So really encourage you to, to try that out. Really easy to use and as well. And you can also create your own on that right. site as well. Yep. But mm -hmm. it's just really nice that they've got great, so great many. Where you can place. really kind of yep. pinpoint what is your style if you aren't sure what the what yep. it really is. Mm -hmm. um, I also look to some of the tile companies that I work with. A lot of them have some really great photos of the actual tiles that they offer and the use of their materials, such as um, shower walls, bathroom floors, kitchen backsplash ideas, and fabulous fireplace tiles. And, and um, what are some of those tile companies? That um, well, I work a lot with Arizona, and I'll leave some of those on the resource page. Perfect. Um, Bedrosians Perfect. has some great... Um, yes, I, I've been to that site. That's yeah, they have some fabulous great... Site. As well as Surface Art, I find they yeah. also have some really great um, inspirational photos on their site. Great. Um, and then also another thing is, too, that I really use a lot, and maybe you have a furniture line or two that you like, mm -hmm. check out their websites. They offer, most every furniture website has some fantastic room galleries of all of their products, um, as well as their online catalogs, mm -hmm. which are very inspirational because they show full rooms completely decorated right. that you can pick apart things that you like and, and, and you can find out where they're at and you might yeah. even find that perfect inspirational mm -hmm. piece of furniture that you want to work with. And maybe you're not able to afford that particular line, but you'll get some ideas exactly. of something that you want to find elsewhere right. that, that is a little more affordable for you. Yeah, and you find that all the time. You can find yeah. that there's knockoffs. And, and again, that's back to the, the sites as, such as, you know, your Wayfair right. and um, Joss and Maine. And there's so yeah. many of those. And we can, again, put those on the resource page where you can um, find sort of knockoffs because not every piece needs to be yep. on the high-end side. Right, um, right. And then also when your eyeballs have had enough <laughs> of screen being time. On screen time, yes. We, got, we all spend um, too much time there. Exactly. Then I suggest picking up some design and lifestyle magazines. Yeah, back again. so they, fun to watch. There's so many awesome inspirational photos in there, great design tips, um, resources, local resources. So I find those to be really helpful and inspirational. Yeah, there is something to, to be said for just flipping through those pages and yep. seeing those gorgeous um, you know, photos yeah. right in Step front of you. Step away from that yeah. computer, yeah. sit down, pour a glass of wine, and, <laughs> and just, flip through just your magazines. Fun. Yeah. So then the next step, uh, if you are purchasing a new home and going through this process with a new home, then one of the first steps is to meet with your builder. Um, your builder will have lots of options for you to choose from. Uh, some builders have more than others, but there are always some, some great options to, uh, to choose. Uh, one of the things that we recommend that you start with first is your cabinetry. So mm -hmm. talk a little bit about that, Teresa. Well, yeah, and here at Cobol, they have all of your selections, well, your cabinetry selections, a lot of the uh, paint selections and those types of things right there in their sales, in the sales office. Center. So you yep. have a chance to really take advantage of that to look at your cabinetry options as far as door styles and finishes because you really stain want color yes <laughs> or the stains um, whether you want to do any kind of two-toning they also have cabinet <laughs> hardware on site and that's super helpful because you're going to want to have those selections at least in your mind for this design process that right. you go through when you'll uh, be meeting to make all the other selections the for finishes. the materials right. correct right um, they also most builders offer multiple paint selections. Right. And um, here at Cobol, I know we've got like some really great yeah, stain okay. and paint combinations, stain and uh, all stain combinate or all, all stain paint, packages. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, so um, it's also really helpful if you can grab some of those uh, select uh, paint swatches that they have and look at them with your own furnishings at home before you head out because you want to make sure that if you're picking a new wall color and tone mm -hmm. that it really works with the things that you do plan to to bring to, with to you. bring with you and to right. keep in the new home and or remodel. Right. And then um, we have what's called Design Studio Manager here at Cobalt Urban Homes. And it's just a fabulous website that you can go to where you can see all of the selections, whether it's plumbing fixtures or um, you know, the, the finishes, and kind of play around with it and, and put your, your own mood board together within that Design Studio Manager. But that's a great tool to use before you go to the Design Center to actually make those materials and finish selections. Right, because don't they also have like you can view all your lighting selections Absolutely. and your yep. plumbing selections and you'll want to know yep. kind of have a good idea of what the finishes you're going to be right. working with with exactly the home. exactly 
So, so after we've kind of done all of those things, really kind of done our homework and, and have that inspiration and have kind of started that process and made some of those choices and decisions, um, then in terms of the interior selection tips, um, when you actually go to the design center, um, what are some things that, that we um, should think about there, Teresa? Well, I would consider um, adding and upgrading things that offer some high impact and especially things that would be costly to do and maybe messy later or disruptive <laughs> later. So yeah. I often suggest that, and this is a good place to, ex to look at where you want to extend your hardwood flooring. Um, be sure you know about like and share with what you need for durability and where. Yeah, um, depending on your family setup and exactly. you have dogs, definitely make sure you tell your designer all of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, definitely things that can elevate the home that uh, would, you know, that certainly add value that, again, something you wouldn't do later would be even something like we have here in this model home with the beautiful waterfall edge on the countertops. That's such an amazing, <laughs> impactful mm -hmm. feature there. Um, and then also a great place to splurge is on the cabinetry. Yeah. And um, it's nice to maybe do, you know, if you want to accent an island with a painted finish and some working with some stains, or maybe you want to two-tone your uppers mm -hmm. and uppers your lowers. lowers. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. And those, again, those are things that you just would not want to do later after, on, after you yeah. move in. Yep, absolutely. And hardwood, talk a little bit about flooring. Um, well, I, like I said, I would definitely consider extending as much hardwood as at the time mm -hmm. because that is definitely something mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to do later. Um, and it's and the more you do, uh, the more hardwood you have, the less maintenance I believe that you have as far as keeping up with carpet and dirty. Right. And and the more value you're going to add for resale, exactly. resale potential as well. Right. Yep. Great. Um, and then you also maybe want to consider some of the specialty yes. items, uh, yeah. especially that that Cobal offers, mm -hmm. such as. And one of my favorite things is the new sliding yeah, barn, doors. barn doors. And yes. so yeah. those are a lot of fun to add. And again, right. that's something that's, you know, really nice to just have done at the beginning. And then another feature is um, custom closet systems, yes. which is mm -hmm. a fantastic thing to have. So, right. you know, if you're downsizing and your closets are maybe a little bit smaller, but yet they can be much more functional than even a bigger closet that's just a, a mess. <laughs> right. Um, and the, the floor to ceiling uh, tiles on the fireplace, which we're going to be to be showing you um, in this home, um, has that that real wonderful focal point, high impact focal point in, in your living area if you have a fireplace. Um, so uh, now we're we're going to um, spend some time at Guys, um, and Teresa is going to share with you a, a little bit of that process that she went through to choose all the finishes in this model, mm -hmm. um, and kind of what the the end result that you can expect when you visit our design center. And we use Guys Flooring as our design center. You'll set up an appointment to go meet with a designer there. And what's great about those designers is when you have that inspiration, when you have some of that direction, um, and you sit down and share that with them, then they'll be able to simplify the process and, and really pull those, those materials that fit with what you're looking for. They also always um, seem to have that secret stash. Exactly. <laughs> of something that isn't out on the floor room that they all of a sudden will pull Which out of a drawer. Which is so and, important yeah. to have all of your, you know, mood boards, boards everything and, with and you. your yeah. inspirational images because they you know, they can't showcase everything. everything right. And so they often will, you know, they'll have something up here that they know that yeah. might just be just perfect for right. your particular design style. Right. Um, so they'll, they'll pull that out. Um, but then, um, you know, they'll, they'll really be there to help you pull everything together. But Teresa, why don't you share a little bit about what you went through in terms of of designing this model? Well, kind of, I think if you just want me to kind of give them a quick overview on, you know, what the process will actually yep. look like yes. it, guys. Yep. So, you know, obviously you'll first meet with your designer and that's where you'll really want to have those mood boards and you'll want to have um, any color palettes and design styles that you know of that you like so that they can work you with. Just br bring it all with you. Exactly. Um, and so share with them also what you've chosen or preliminarily mm -hmm. looked at in terms of cabinetry and door styles because those finishes will, like I said, they'll really impact the, the 
the design of the home and the direction you're going to go in and, and yeah. really yes they'll really sort of set the mood and tone of what other color finishes you're going to be working with and they will have cabinet samples there at guys um, but if you can kind of narrow down what direction you're, you're going in and then they can pull that sample to work right with. and you're not locked into anything you always right. you know they may help change your mind right, but right. Um, they'll definitely yeah. you know and you know work with you as far as what colors you're looking at doing right. working right. with um, and usually the first place they'll get once you've shown them your cabinetry then they'll really start with the big picture and that's the overall hardwood flooring the floor yeah. and that's sort of the main color selection there and and again I'd like to stress that that's where you want to share with them what needs you have as far as you know durability because mm -hmm. there's uh, all sorts of levels of flooring in there mm -hmm. that they can educate you on which will you know let you know where you know what you need to what be pet sense. friendly what right. you know what are right. good, good colors to work with as far as you know showing less footprints and pet hair and yep. that type of thing right yep um so after flooring then what what do you did you go so to the next next step we usually move right into the kitchen mm -hmm. and again that's the next big high impact piece right. and i think it's definitely the the your kitchen countertops and island material and so from there that you start building from that you'll build onto your kitchen backsplash mm -hmm. and when with most of the floor plans being such open floor plans it generally just is sort of a natural um, to pick the same thing with your fireplace tile at that same time because right. you want all of that to it doesn't need to be matchy and ma you know matchy matchy but you really want it to all really blend nicely flow. and yep. flow and mm -hmm. just not feel you know chaotic and so so it can certainly personalize some of those spaces and uh, and I know you're going to talk a little bit about how to personalize those spaces um, and make them a little bit unique but still have the big picture in mind the whole home right so you know you'll most likely have several bathrooms to design um, and and without you know the whole house looking you want the house to look different and unique and each room to have its own personality without it looking like a jumbled you mess stepped of, into it an entirely right. different we want home. it to all yeah. look like it all belongs under the same roof right but you know i don't been working a lot with um and we've done that here in this home with pattern floor tiles yeah. and they're like sort of the new yeah. kind of way to really bring some life and impact into um into bathrooms and laundry spaces mm -hmm. where we've sort of moved away from the accent walls and accent uh liners and liner wall whatever yeah the deco <laughs> lines deco, deco lines in yeah. showers <laughs> yeah. um we've started to work a lot more with um patterns and shapes um and and it's Those actually funny geometrics are, are really yes, big hexagon yeah. floor tiles yeah. whether they're pattern or even solids we're mm -hmm. starting to accent the solids with with grout which has mm -hmm. been something we haven't done in many years, uh -huh. but it really is impactful. And mm -hmm. so consider those things because you want to make sure that it isn't so bold and colorful that you can't, um, that it feels like it's dated, mm -hmm. but that it still can be very interesting from space to space. Mm -hmm. So um, share a little bit about what um, you were going for in this model. So in this model, you know, with, with, here we are in Lowry, and I really was looking for a very modern, urban, sort of sleek design. Mm -hmm. um, and so we wanted stuff, something that was clean and simple, but impactful. <laughs> So uh, at Guy's, um, you'll end up with a, a color palette and a board um, that looks like this and shows all of your selections together. Uh, and that's what you'll, you'll go away with. And you'll have this great um, vision of, of what your home is, is going to look like. But if you would, um, Teresa, share with us what you were really going for and what your goals were for this model as we take a look at, at what the, the gorgeous finished product looks like. Okay, yeah. Well, so here um, I was really going for a sleek, modern design. Um, we went with the white cabinets to really just have a very soft, subtle backdrop um, mm -hmm. to really let the impact of the, um, the quartz island, countertop yeah. and the waterfall island. It's just amazing, and it's it really stunning. is a beautiful piece. It is. Um, also went with a little bit lighter, warmer, softer flooring. On top. Lo love this floor. Wood, mm -hmm. Yeah, the color is mm -hmm. great. Um, it really is uh, just a, the perfect tone to, like I said, it's it's uh, it doesn't show a lot of footwear. Yeah, it the lighter color is, mm -hmm. is great from that perspective. And I love that it's a warm gray, so you can kind of go cool or warm. Right. It's not, mm -hmm. yeah, because yeah. it's not that you know, it's just not a gray gray. Um, right. 
And then I really wanted to focus on the statement lighting in here. Mm -hmm. You know, we had this opportunity to do these, these lights. really yeah. wonderful <laughs> large pendants uh -huh. um, with the chrome finish and the same thing in the dining room. Not too matched up, but they really work together nicely with this open floor mm -hmm. plan. Um, yeah, it really is stunning when you walk into this open floor um, floor plan to see this, this stunning um, quartz with the gray veining and those gorgeous lights above and it, it's just a and then then this this you know fireplace right, that I love I this tile was was just beautiful yeah we just thought it'd be kind of fun to play with the polish yeah. look everything yeah. seemed uh -huh. to for so long be kind of a home or a matte yeah. finish mm -hmm. or stack stone uh -huh. so here to keeping that uh more modern feel. Right. We just really thought it would be nice to have um, a more polished yep. um, and a reflective surface. Yeah, and it yep. too is mm -hmm. again back to the more of the taupe and warmer uh -huh. tones. It is so yeah. that it really works well with the grays in the room, mm -hmm. but it isn't speaking so much gray. Right, right. Um, and then um, upstairs in the master, um, I, that was just such a, a bold statement. And the, you know, everybody who walks in, it's that high drama. And talk a little bit about what yeah, you're. Yeah, I just thought there. it would be really fun to work with. You know, I didn't want to have to stick with the same metals throughout the home. I loved working with the chrome on this level here, but I thought it would be a lot of fun to really pick up on blacks making its way into the market. Huge. Um, so the black with the brass, it's just such a bold and beautiful mm -hmm. and very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, finished combination. And then the fact that we ran the tile up behind the, the way, vanity, yeah. it's uh -huh. just, that is a, one of those other items or one of those other places where I would really recommend to upgrade to, because again, that is not something that you'll what be able to do later. <laughs> and so it's, it really in a smaller space, it just really creates a statement so much drama in that yep. space. Yeah. Uh, anything else, Teresa, that you wanted to add on um, um, no, in I terms think... of, of the model and what you did here in, in this gorgeous model? Uh, no, I think really, like I said, you know, with the pattern floor tiles downstairs, that was a really fun little added, you know, right. uh, the flex space in the bathroom down there that really just added a lot to that space. So the process that Teresa went through in designing this gorgeous model is the process that you would really be going through when you're purchasing that new home and going to the design center. But for those of you who are not in the market for a new home, um, we can still accomplish the same type of, of feeling um, with what we call a room refresh. And while the process is somewhat the same, obviously you're working with um, your, your existing finishes, mm -hmm. your existing furniture. Uh, but Teresa has some fabulous tips to share in terms of uh, how to, to mm -hmm. accomplish that room refresh. Well, yeah, so I think first of all, I'd start out um, considering a new focal point or accent wall. Um, one of, a really great thing, and we did do that upstairs, was to have a nice bold backdrop to the master mm -hmm. bedroom wall, whether it be paint, which is such an inexpensive um, refresh idea right. and or wallpaper and mm -hmm. now some of the wallpaper comes in peel and sticks something really that's simple. super easy yep. and it's easy to remove um, down the road um, and oftentimes <clears throat> some of our homes fall flat with architectural elements and I might be a little obsessed with shiplap these days, but I've found that it- You and Joanna Gaines, right? Yeah. Well, and not only, I just really want to make a point that it isn't just a modern or a farmhouse, farmhouse look, right. but it really does go to a really nice modern farmhouse, it modern, mm -hmm. it, it can really read modern. Um, you can try using it on ceilings, mm -hmm. um, a dining room ceiling, you know, painted white. It's a beautiful <laughs> look. Um, it's also a really great idea for, uh, again, like to a back, uh, backdrop for bathroom vanity with mm -hmm. floating mirrors. It's a lovely look. Yes, I love that. Teresa, you just did that in your own home. I did. And, and I saw photos of that and, and I had, would never have thought to do that in, in the, the bath vanity. And what a gorgeous look. Yeah, and it's just a very easy um, and inexpensive way to mm -hmm. really update the uh, space. The master um, space, yep. And also taking, you know, consider, let's not forget our laundry rooms, which get kind of left out. Um, what a great way to add to a, a wall of, of shiplap and I've, you know, decorative coat hooks, mm -hmm. some drying racks. I literally yeah. just did that at our house as well. And it's maybe one of my favorite makeovers of <laughs> yeah. the whole house. You have to spend time there. At least make exactly. it fun to be there, and, right? <laughs> and the, the shiplap is lovely white, but it also looks great if you want to paint it paint black it or yeah. and another yeah. color that works with your design and your right. decor. And so in addition to kind of finding that, that focal point, um, what else it, um, can you do in terms of easy updates? Well, I would say if we wanted to move into the kitchen, um, kitchen backsplashes can be an, a fairly easy project to take on mm -hmm. and they can really update the whole kitchen space and right. design. Um, and you don't have to remove countertops or you know change your cabinets out. 
Um, another thing is maybe consider just even adding a new gourmet faucet and maybe mm -hmm. you're bringing in the new finishes. Um, like I said, mentioned black. Um, matte black's really a, a very popular right now and it looks great with mixing it with just about any other mm -hmm. metal. Um, it looks great with coppers, with chromes, with nickel, with the new champagne mm -hmm. golds. Mm -hmm. Um, you might can't, also can't go wrong with matte black. Yeah, and if you yeah. have an older um, style kitchen, and maybe you want to just consider removing a cabinet and doing some um, floating shelves, those are a really yeah. great look right now. And you can um, style it with personal objects, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you can um, stack it with you know heirloom dishes, or right. just if you've collected regular you know mm -hmm. your your everyday dishes, so long as it's kept kind of tidy. Right. Um, another thing in the kitchen too is to work with um, some of your to work with decorative trays, um, and I like to keep my the spaces organized um, with those trays, and it looks polished right. and it can be stylish. May right. I say it's right. like you want them to you know the everyday items don't have to get put away, but if mm -hmm. you keep them all together, also another great idea is um, to get your wooden cu um, cutting boards and, mm -hmm. and layer those and stack those on the counter. So they're right there, but they also look decorative. Yeah. Love that idea. It's a really simple way to, to just create, again, um, a more dr dramatic look in the kitchen space. Right. Mm -hmm. I think probably updating lighting might be the most impactful. And I think people forget about that. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, until you actually start changing your fixtures yeah. out, that you just maybe look mm -hmm. and go, how did I live with that for all this time? <laughs> yeah. But it's also, again, bringing back in these yeah. new finishes and mm -hmm. new uh, metals to... Um, all kind of work together, but it's a very affordable way to do. Yeah, I mean, you don't have that many light fixtures in the home, so you're only talking about two or three pendants exactly. over the island, one dining room fixture. So and, you find one yeah. that really mm -hmm. speaks to you, and mm -hmm. then you just play off of the, you know, that fixture with material and size and mm -hmm. color, mm -hmm. so that it again doesn't look too matchy matchy, but that it right. flows and it works and it looks cohesive with the other um, fixtures in the room. Um, and then another one, which we've talked about a number of times is that's so easy is to switch out your cabinet hardware. Right. I mean, that can really elevate and update your cabinetry. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. just going from, you know, a stainless brush nickel mm -hmm. to again, bringing in and that mixing up black some black or, yep. or mm -hmm. champagne golds or the mm -hmm. copper, like I said, that yep. they're just all can really elevate and change the, the whole look of the space. It, and it is amazing the difference it makes just that change alone. It is. Yeah. And, and while doing that too, you might consider um, looking through the house at your, you know, the door hardware and hinges right. too. Because mm -hmm. updating those, mm -hmm. if they're old style or older mm -hmm. finished mm -hmm. colors, mm -hmm. that can be a very easy um, switch, out. switch yep. to do and, and, and very affordable. So obviously, in addition to some of those finishes um, that you can change, furniture is, is um, the, the obvious place right. that you can update. So talk a little bit about how you can easily update some of your furnishings without having to refurnish the entire home. Well, yeah, first of all, I say start with what you have. So maybe take a look around the house and at the in other rooms and don't be afraid to, to you know, pull things and shuffle some furniture around. Um, yeah, I would never have thought that. You had mentioned that the other day about just moving furniture from one room to the other. Wouldn't have thought to do that. Right, yeah. and I think some people just get too too stuck, but mm -hmm. uh, give it a try. All you have to do is take it back to the room. <laughs> right, um, right. I love to, the idea of trying to like maybe moving area rugs around. Mm -hmm. You can even layer area rugs. Obviously, the you know you can bring in new pillows to the bedroom or to the sofas. That adds, you know, you can just pick up a whole new color palette at that point if you've got right. some neutral, um, larger pieces to work with. Mm -hmm. um, and then adding new accessories and maybe mm -hmm. a new piece of art. Mm -hmm. Yeah, art, art is is a, you know a, a very high impactful way to to change change the look and feel of the home. Right. And it's interesting how um, if you have the neutrals, you know, like this neutral sofa that we have here, um, how you can just with a few pieces of art with switching out a couple of pieces of furniture, how you can go from, from that modern sleek um, design style to um, what, you know, we're going to show what um, you did here. What what did you decide to, to go for here and freshening this home? Well, here I thought, you know, it's kind of making a big, uh, a way into the into our design world is um, to bringing a uh, modern coastal yep. style into here. Um, blues make a big comeback. It's um, 
very popular, it's beautiful, and who doesn't want to have a home that feels like a vacation? It feels like so, you're, exactly. Yeah, yeah so it feels like it, you're on the beach somewhere. I don't yeah, want to draw yeah. the colors from uh -huh. the sea and the sand and the sky, right, and right. so that was my inspiration here. While you could still keep uh, the majority of your furnishings, you could really take on a different look with just mm -hmm. a few pieces, lamps, and things like that. Right, so um, share with us what you did here, what you switched out. So in here, I did switch out um, a couple of chairs. They were a little, they were definitely more modern. They had the chrome. black leather They were chrome. black leather with uh -huh. chrome. Mm -hmm. And so we went ahead and switched out to a, a little bit more of a coastal style chair, right. uh -huh. but still fits in the room and still really works well with the sofa. Um, mm -hmm. Just switched out a few pillows. Mm -hmm. um, definitely wanted to switch out with the tabletop accessories, mm -hmm. and that's very simple to do. Right. Um, we switched out some of the lamps to uh -huh. give a little bit more of a coastal right. vibe love, there. Love those lamps. And then yeah. the artwork, which and, just yeah, bringing in that, the blue to pop, that, just to yeah, to kind of pull the difference. black accent right. out and mm -hmm. bring the blue in. Uh -huh. So, so just with a, a few little changes, and you know, without investing much money exactly. at all. I mean, there really wasn't much investment here, other than you know, the two chairs were probably the most, and it wasn't that big of a deal to bring the chairs in, but then bringing in those accessories and the artwork. We have. Modern, Modern meets, meets coastal. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've seen how easy it is to um, to freshen uh, a space as well. Um, and we're just going to do a little recap. But before that, I want to remind everyone that we are going to take some time for Q&A at the end. Um, so you can ask all of those questions that, that have been burning in you um, as you've been uh, listening to all of uh, Teresa's wonderful tips. Um, so go ahead and send your questions into the chat. And we'll pull those up and spend a few minutes um, responding to those questions. But to recap, um, obviously, you know, we, we need to find that inspiration through the many resources um, that, that you have suggested. And I think there's so many to, to use today, which is wonderful. Um, decide on that design style, color, you know, palettes exactly. that speak to you. And then what you always say, Teresa, is... It's, let's just make this be fun. Exactly. Like, this should not exactly. be work. This should You should enjoy this whole process. Um, it should really be just a fun experience. Yeah. And, and not be so caught up in making it right. And, you know, right. there's, you know, you, you, there's really no wrong way. It's, no, it's there something is no that, right or yeah. wrong. If you like the style and mixing styles is... Perfectly absolutely. acceptable today. Yeah, absolutely uh -huh. fine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, so uh, we do also have this wonderful um, list of resources um, that we have um, for everybody. And when we do our follow up email to everyone who's participated this evening, we'll be sure to include this resource list for you. Um, but now we're going to go ahead and, and take a look at what questions um, we have have here on the chat chat and um, spend some time answering those questions. So we do have some great questions here, and we're going to start with, um, you've told us where to splurge on finishes. What furnishings should I splurge on versus save on? Okay, so let me give you three splurges and three saves. Great, that? perfect. So splurge, um, sofa for sure. It's something we use every day, and we want it to be comfortable and good quality. Um, dining room or kitchen chairs. Uh, those we also use those frequently so we want to spend some money on those so that they're sturdy and that they wear well for us and consider performance fabrics on those as well and then um, the other thing would be window treatments um, window treatments whether it's drapery or shades um, as we can see here <laughs> we can see how important window treatments are is, as Teresa and I are sitting here in the sun um, exactly. at this time of day <laughs> and um, you just it's you know definitely go custom with those it's okay. uh, that can really make or break a room so those three splurges and yeah, what so about the saves how about three saves um, I would say end or side tables those you usually just have in your room for to maybe set a drink on and to maybe pull a room together to be more cohesive um, so those you can go lower end on something like that um, same thing with like an entry or console table those are really meant for decorative purposes and my other save would be nightstands. I think that so long as you invest in your bed, but your nightstands really serve the purpose and can offer some really great styles. Uh, what if I like multiple themes and can't decide on a style or theme? So I'm playing around with all these fabulous mood boards and I'm just finding that I'm just kind of loving everything. What, how, how do I help narrow it down? Well, I don't think that, I actually think that some of the best design is more than one style. So kind of two heads are better than one sort of two designs are better, styles are better than one. So I think that blending them, a lot like what we did here, mm -hmm. is um, really 
uh, the way to go with design. So I think that, you know, you Keep, keeps it more interesting that way. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and then allows you to kind of flex one way or the other as you want to refresh it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Are there any trends that are going out of style that we should avoid or trends we should definitely include to be current? Well, as far as trends that are going out of style, I think that <clears throat> there's still some of the designers that are going to say, we're all talking about the gray. Um, some of them think that it's going to move to an accent position, others, and as and uh, no longer be the main color. Um, I still see that we're using it that's turned into softer tones of the grays, lighter versions, closer to gray and white tones. Um, so I really think that it's kind of up to you, but I think that that might be something that some designers might think so um, that's going out. As far as... Um, things that are staying, I think we've touched on this a few times, and that would be um, mostly the matte black finishes. It's become such a popular finish in terms of uh, your lighting, your plumbing fixtures, door hardware, cabinet hardware, and it, because it's such an easy finish to blend with so many other finishes, it really seems to be kind of the new, it's taken over the, the bronze look, and it really seems to be what's really taking the control right now. So. so kind of in keeping with that, um, how do you mix metals and, and, and <clears throat> mix woods? That's another question we had. Well, it's kind of like... Any rules that, that are, are around that? No, I don't really... I, I think that if you just keep um, in mind that you don't want to mix too many. It's the same thing with design styles. If we want to kind of keep two styles, three gets to be too many. So same thing with metals. I mean, as far as metals, I would say... Maybe like, limited like you to did here the black mat and the and exactly. The gold. And yeah. once you move to another space, it's okay to mix the blacks and the golds. Mm -hmm. But I wouldn't mix that on the same level in the same space as we did with the chrome mm -hmm. here. And so you can play with those throughout the home, but just be you know conscious and and you know keep make sure that it's cohesive on the in the spaces in the same as space. well. Yeah, and okay. that they still all can tie together with the other door hardware and finishes that are in the home. Okay. Uh, another question, I'm starting uh, a master bath remodel. Would the process be the same in terms of vanity, cabinet style, everything? that? that it makes yeah, I think you can follow suit with all of the okay. same, you know, process that we've talked about in terms of, you know, scaling it back. Mm -hmm. and, and it's good to start with just one space because it, it, I think that when you don't... It's overwhelming. It does. Mm -hmm. And I think that if yeah. you stay focused on that and move from room to mm -hmm. room, it just, it ends up turning out to be a much more um, thoughtful design. Um, and again, you know, keep track of those mood boards so that you carry those through as you move through the rest of the house. Should I stay away from bold or bright colors? Um, well, I don't, I wouldn't be afraid of bold colors if they're used in, you know, within, uh, in accent pillows or accessories or area rugs in your artwork. I get a little fearful of them when they're A in, little goes a long way. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, I think that you can add some you know, real nice personality with mm -hmm. them, but I think that if you can move them out when you might tire of them, so not having them in your, you know, your hard surface and materials, I think, is a good choice. Is installing shiplap a DIY project you can do yourself? So you just did well, it. Well, I, yeah, <laughs> I, my husband and I, we took it on, and um, some of the more difficult spots, so on ceilings, those are a little bit trickier, so... Um, it is, I probably would recommend that you get somebody some help if you're not super, super handy, but, um, doing it on, um, you know, on the walls in, mm -hmm. uh, places that are reachable, I think that it's definitely a easy project and it's very affordable. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's really simple to do. Uh, can you switch out an old wood burning fireplace? Well, then yes, the answer is yes. Because you just did that as well. We did, and mm -hmm. um, while I might get some people that look at me a little sideways, <laughs> um, I'm gonna say yes, you can and go electric. And I know it sounds a little scary, and until you actually go and look at them, trust me, they are much more realistic now. They used They're to be. Mm -hmm. um, very efficient, and they are, some of the larger ones can heat up to a thousand square foot of space, and they can simply be plugged in or hardwired. Mm -hmm. Um, they come in modern styles, they come in traditional styles, so they do the modern linear mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. um, and all they require is a one by four wall to go to, to be placed in. So you don't need a deep, deep wall to You don't need mm -hmm. a deep wall. You don't, they can be surrounded by drywall because they, they do not get hot. Right. So they, um, but they do put out air. They do, I mean, they do put out heat. They have mm -hmm. blowers on them. So, um, yes, I think that, and didn't you tell me that we're having a little, maybe gas 
situation. Yes. Um, so um, it, here in the city and county of Denver, um, they are entertaining uh, potentially going to no gas, uh, not allowing any gas in new construction moving forward. Um, so we all might be looking at going to electric in the future. Right, which is um, happening so, yeah. in California now. So Exactly. I, and you'll yep. start seeing it a lot more on a lot of these, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. television design programs. So, right. um, But I promise you they look very realistic. But, you know, you can go and look at them for yourself. How do I make each room have its own personality without creating a chaotic look? Well, I can tell you what how to not get chaotic, and that would be to sort of go back to what I was talking about on design, on, on your styles, like trying not to mix more than two styles. If you start adding, if you start adding three styles or more into your home, it's clearly going to be chaotic, chaotic and confusing no matter what. Um, adding personality, I think, is easy enough to do within your artwork. Mm -hmm. and, and not to be afraid to change up colors in different rooms with mm -hmm. your accents. Mm -hmm. um, always having some sort of common thread throughout the home mm -hmm. helps bring things, you know, keeps things cohesive. But um, it certainly doesn't mean that you can't have a fun and personable mm -hmm. home. But I, like I said, I think that really just making sure that you're going to stick with modern coastal stay with you know yeah. modern coastal. mix the modern and the coastal and, exactly. and not try to bring anything else and in. when you are mixing those there it's kind of a, a idea to keep in mind is maybe working with like an 80 20 kind of percentage so sort of like in this space here we've mm -hmm. got about 80 percent of more modern style furnishings mm -hmm. Um, about 20% are a little more coastal. Right. If you try to shoot for 50-50, you're going to turn out with a house yeah. that looks like two different spaces that are like clashing. No one, they're fighting and nobody yeah. can figure out what's going on. So you really want to yeah. make sure that, that it's... That's a fabulous, fabulous rule. Yeah. Right. So Good. anyway, that's... Well, great. Well, I think we've, we've um, obviously um, received some amazing information, um, great tips for both uh, if you're purchasing a new home, how to, to figure out how to... Um, decorate that home, design that home uh, so that it feels good when you move in and that it reflects your personality and your style, as well as how to freshen an existing home. So um, I think we have great resources, the, the process down, um, and some things to avoid right. and some things um, to do and not to do. So wonderful information Thank as you. always, Teresa, really appreciate you sharing it's all of your expertise. And again, those resources uh, we'll have available for you. And obviously, if you need a design coach, and, and I love that uh, Teresa talks about it as being a design coach, um, she's certainly available. Virtue Designs is available to, um, to provide those services to you. And we certainly hope that you'll come visit our uh, Cobal Urban Homes models, um, where you can see all of Teresa's work. Uh, as well as, as our, our beautiful homes and picture how you might be able to, uh, to make that home your own. So thank you so much for sharing your evening with us and hope that you've got something out of this. Thank you.